Okay, looks good. All right, welcome everybody. My name is Josh McLean. I'm the uh, president of Dave Walters Yachts. Really excited to be continuing our webinar series here. Uh, first and foremost, I hope everybody is uh, well and safe. Uh, we know over the past month, it's been a little bit of uh, out of the norm for most folks. So we've been really happy to be able to put these events on. Um, and we're really excited about uh, this webinar today um, because this is our opportunity to sit down with, uh, with our partners and our friends at Hylus Yachts. Uh, we've got uh, our team joining in from all over the, uh, the U.S. and around the world. Um, we've got Andy all the way out in Taiwan. We've got Roger over in the U.K. Dave's out in California, and the rest of the team here is back in Florida. So um, if you haven't joined one of our webinars yet, I want to just run through a little bit on how you guys can participate with the team here. Um, you will see on your screen there is a question and answer um, tool. You can use that question and answer tool at any time to uh, propose a question for the panelists. And you can also use the, uh, the chat function as well to send us your notes. So we want this to definitely be in engaging and sort of a two-way street. So anybody at any time, please feel welcome to jump in, ask your questions for the team. And uh, we're just all thrilled that you are joining us today. So as I mentioned, my name's Josh McLean. Um, I work out of the Fort Lauderdale office of Dave Walters Yachts. Um, back in October, we partnered with Hylus Yachts uh, to represent the brand, um, both and of course on the brokerage section, which we've been doing for quite some time. Um, it's been a, a, a pretty, uh, pretty incredible uh, relationship. We've built a lot of friendships, um, of course, uh, some close business ties as well, but uh, I don't think you can talk about the boats without talking about the people and the brand. And the whole purpose of this event today is to give, uh, give anybody out there who may be interested in Hylus Yachts or curious or even current owners, uh, just a little bit of a, a, a taste of you know, who the people are behind the company, a little bit about its history and such. So um, I think the best place to start would be by uh, introducing my friend, uh, Andy Wang. So, Andy, uh, how about you give everybody a little intro here and tell us a little bit about uh, uh, yourself and, and, and how you came into this. Hi, guys. Uh, so my name is Andy Huang. Uh, I'm the CEO of Hylus Yacht, and uh, I'm currently in Taiwan uh, doing this webinar. Uh, very happy to be here. Um, I graduated, uh, well, I actually grew up in um, Los Angeles and went to school there and came back to Taiwan to help uh, my par parents' business. Um, and then uh, I have, I'm currently based in Taiwan at the shipyard and I have my sister Peggy in the States uh, that are in charge in the, uh, the U.S. operation. All right. And so then we've got uh, Peggy and her husband, David. How are you guys? Good, how are good. you? All right. Yeah, uh, very happy uh, to, uh, to be here. And uh, my name is Peggy Huang. Um, I'm the third generation of the, you know, Hylus uh, builder and founder. And uh, I, I went to school, uh, in Los Angeles and lived there for the past 14 years. Uh, I had this opportunity to join the company uh, three years ago. And uh, my background is, bef uh, my career was a graphic designer for eight years. And, uh, you know, went to school, focused on, you know, uh, fine arts and marketing. So uh, I, I'm actually doing a lot of marketing for Hylas Yachts, uh, uh, you know, um, from doing our work and you know advertisement and website website events and stuff and i also lead a day-to-day -day operation here in the states uh so um very happy to to be here and uh i don't think you could separate you out from david because you guys are kind of joined at the hip in fact um you know and i'm gonna call you out on this david you got to tell the story of how you met peggy now, yeah, 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 of course, I'm going to put you on the spot and first sure. tell everybody a little bit about uh, about yourself, your background, because I, I would say 
out of everybody, David, your background is definitely the most out of left field in terms of folks in the yachting industry. And it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So tell us a little <laughs> bit about how you came into this, what your background in, and then you got to tell everybody how you met Peggy. <laughs> sure. Well, um, uh, I'm the director of field marketing for Hiles Yachts, uh, kind of a dream job for me, uh, because I certainly never thought that I would be doing that. And, uh, it's, uh, I feel like, like I'm natural at it because uh, I, I was a uh, Hiles 54 owner and um, that um, I, I was a, a big fan of Hiles for, for many, many years. Uh, my background is in uh, the music, TV and entertainment business. Uh, I, uh, I have a company in New York City called the Cutting Room Studios and we do uh, lots of records, lots of um, TV shows, movies, and uh, and things like that, podcasts. So I've been doing that. This is our 25th anniversary this year. A little plug for the Cutting Room Studios. Um, so uh, I knew I wanted to sail um, quite quite young. Uh, I love the whole freedom of it. And being in Manhattan for so many years, I went to NYU uh, and then Berkeley College of Music. Uh, and I set up a studio in, in my in my dorm in a production company and uh, didn't really know that I was actually creating the business that was going to be uh, <laughs> the rest of my life. Uh, but about five to 10 years into that business, I, I, I started sailing with, with friends of mine on the Long Island Sound and um, I, I, I was hooked, I loved it. I just couldn't, uh, couldn't think of anything else I would wanna do. Um, I, I used to do a lot of uh, climbing uh, all over the world with friends and it just got me out in nature and and there was just a lot of friends around and that seemed to be what sailing was all about for me except you know I could just get a boat and put it in the Long Island Sound and bounce around on the weekends. Anyway, uh, not to draw the story out um, too long but uh, I I bought a boat, I started hanging out with the wrong crowd, the blue water crowd, and uh, I started setting my ambitions uh, further than just bouncing around the sound. I, I took my first boat out to Bermuda and just loved the idea of uh, long distance sailing. I started racing in the sound and getting on all the distance races. Uh, I ended up doing the fast net race in 2007, which was a heavy weather year. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't quite I think that's an advertisement for blue water sailing, but it, it just, I understood weather conditions and, and heavy weather, and uh, that's something I wanted to expose myself to. Um, I still wanted to continue to sail, so I, I took the boat on the Caribbean 1500 um, back when Steve Black was running it. He became a sailing mentor of mine uh, and a few others. Uh, and uh, I decided that I needed a better boat if I was going to continue to do this. Uh, so uh, every boat show, I would always visit the Hylas area and just kind of look and go through all the different models and think to myself, okay, yeah, I'm and like two years later, I'm like, oh, yeah, 49, that's, that's the one, that's, that's the boat. And uh, during that time, uh, I'd sold my, my, my old boat uh, in Grenada, actually. And um, uh, I actually had to deliver it back to the U.S., so I got a nice uh, experience going through all the, the different uh, windward and leeward islands and uh, you know, all through the Caribbean on the way back, Bahamas. And uh, when I uh, got the boat back, uh, just handed the keys over to the new owner and then set aside three to five years to find my, my Hylas. And um, uh, I ended up in that three year period sailing quite a bit on um, Archangel, which is a Hylas 70. I started to get, um, kind of get my chops up on, on sailing that boat and what it's like to sail on a, you know, offshore on a, on a real, <laughs> real sweet ride. Uh, and Jim Tingley was the captain of that boat, still is, taught me a ton of tricks and I sailed, I sailed about 20,000 miles with Jim back and forth to Newport, uh, USBI, uh, and he became a big mentor of mine and he actually, uh, he was a captain of 54 and uh, I started looking at 54s and um, 
I fall off one. Uh, to make a long story short, sailed it back and forth to the to the uh, the Virgin Islands, right right alongside Jim on the seventy for a couple of years. And one year I went to go visit him up in Newport because his boat was up there. And I went to the Hylas booth like I always do, and I saw Peggy and Andy. And I looked and this beautiful woman with the Hylas shirt on. <laughs> You're gonna make her blush. <laughs> I said, "Oh my God!" I I I had read uh, that uh, that the third generation was now starting to come into the company, and I thought, "Oh my God, that must be." Uh, Jane and Joseph's uh, daughter and, and brother and daughter. Uh, I mean, uh, sister and son and daughter. Yeah. Now I'm getting like on nerves. But uh, so, uh, and, and Kevin, uh, really, the story has to go back to Kevin because Kevin uh, had just started at Hylas as well. And he sent out a, uh, a, a list uh, or an email to all the owner, invitation to all the owners to meet uh, uh, Peggy and Andy. And um, honestly, I, I had something to do that weekend, so I wasn't going to go to the Newport Boat Show. But since my buddy Jim was there, and, and I, I got to speak with uh, Kevin on the phone, and he, he uh, as you'll see, is a really awesome, friendly guy and great sense of humor, so we hit it off right away. So that kind of swayed me into thinking, you know, maybe I'll go up there and visit Jim. Uh, and stay stay aboard the 70. So I did that, and uh, um, I, I got to meet Andy and Peggy, and I started talking about uh, all the different uh, marketing strategies that 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 now are are uh, you're seeing online with uh, lots of the uh, sailing channels and uh, vagabond and uh, sailing doodles and things like that, and uh, I. Uh, so we kind of hit it off, and I was one of the younger owners, uh, so uh, we kind of kept in touch. Uh, but when I left, uh, I, I emailed everybody. Oops, I emailed everybody, and um, I had Peggy's Peggy's card and her cell phone numbers on there. So I, instead of emailing Peggy, I, I just uh, I just texted her, "Thank you," and uh, and then she texted me back. And then I texted her back, and then she texted me back. I thought, she's kicking me under the table right now. But uh, make a long story short, uh, so that was Newport Boat Show. By Annapolis Boat Show, she had agreed to go sailing with me when I got the boat to the Caribbean. And I gave her a few dates, and she picked New Year's. So I figured, okay, no boyfriend. So, uh... Now I'm getting harder kicks now under the table. <laughs> I'm going to wind it down. Uh, but we uh, we started dating in uh, in Annapolis, and I met the family. I met Roger, uh, uh, and, and and I kept getting invited to these events. You know, whether it was like a little marketing meeting, breakfast, or a dinner. Uh, you know, for the highest team and. People were like, who the hell is this guy? And uh, I remember meeting meeting. Uh, I saw Roger in the in the bathroom, uh, and then you know I later sat down next to him, and he kind of gave me a look like I thought you were a waiter. <laughs> is what he told. So you came into you came into the brand in a way nobody else has. No, <laughs> definitely. I mean, you two together have been has, have been fantastic, and I know together you guys have really been spearheading the marketing efforts. Uh, and, and, and largely the Hylas Owners Group as well, uh, the Hylas Yacht Club, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, but yeah, to say you, you, you fell in love with the Hylas brand, I think would be, you, you well, probably got more than anybody else, so. <laughs> My wife could have made coffee mugs. That's right, that's right. So, all right, well now I want to introduce the matchmaker himself. <laughs> <laughs> so Kevin, yeah. Kevin here, uh, I'm, I'm going to let you introduce a little bit about what your position is and how you came into the brand. And I think David just gave you a pretty good segue. <laughs> That's right. So I used to, I, yeah, I used to work at a dating website. No, no, not at all. I knew it. So uh, very quickly, a bit, bit of background about me. The accent's British. Um, I tell people that I've sailed all of my adult life and that I became an adult when I was about 24. Um, I know that because before then I was a windsurfer, 
Uh, I grew up in the south coast of England, Portsmouth. It's a, a pretty well-known sailing town. Um, I actually had a career in sales, which was fast-moving consumer goods, and I was ultimately the director of national accounts for the, the UK's biggest dairy company, looking after um, major multiple retailers. I uh, had an opportunity to move to uh, New York City in 1920, uh, I think it was. Uh, so how many years ago was that? That's about 40, uh, 20, yeah, so about 20 was when we moved here. Uh, bumped into Christian Shaw, who's also on this call with us, one of the panelists. Uh, he gave me a job as a sailing instructor, hung out with him for a couple of years, then uh, had an opportunity to go to San Francisco, um, was sailing with an organization called the BT Global Challenge, uh, and we were setting up a pay-to-take-part race around the world, and I was kind of the national sales manager looking for sponsorship. Uh, and then about 20 years ago, um, the uh, economy took a bit of a nosedive. Things went south as far as uh, the race was concerned that I was working on in San Francisco. Uh, and so we moved to Florida and then Christian featured again. And so I, I joined Christian uh, teaching sailing with him in, in Florida. Uh, he left the organization we were with, which was Offshore Sailing School, to go to Hylas. Um, and by virtue of being the last man standing, I ended up as the director of operations. I did that for a little while, um, uh, uh, about 15 years, did that for a little while. Uh, then moved into service, worked at a local yard as a, as a service manager. And then Christian featured again. He turned up with a Hylus uh, 56, said, could I do some work on the mast? I said, sure, we can organize that. Uh, and he said, well, the company Hylus is reorganizing. Andy and Peggy are taking over. We should go kite surfing. Okay, we should go kite surfing. So he actually took me and Peggy and Andy uh, kite surfing as a way of introducing me to um, Peggy and Andy. Uh, it seemed to go pretty well, and they asked if I'd like to join the company in sales. So having spent my entire life either selling or sailing, um, I thought, well, what a great opportunity to do something that I believe I'm pretty good at and also in an environment that I love. Uh, and it turns out the family has been just... Awesome. I've been to Taiwan. I'm sure you'll hear more about that. Anyone that buys a yacht goes to Taiwan and you, you become part of the Hylus family super quick. It's my second favorite family to be part of. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Kevin. And uh, I'm going to introduce your, uh, your partner in crime here who, uh, who largely got you into this. Um, Christian Shore. Christian, I don't think there's a Hylus owner out there on the water today that doesn't, uh, doesn't know you by name or by reputation. So uh, for anybody who may not know you, why don't you give us a little bit about your background and, and what your role is here at Hylus Yachts. Uh, thanks, Josh. Hi, everybody. Uh, yes, um, uh, I've been enjoying working on Hyluses since 2002. I'm a lifelong sailor and and as Kevin mentioned, uh, we worked together in sailing schools, sailing school branches. And, um, and then uh, I, at, that, at that time, I lived aboard with, uh, uh, with my family and cruised around. And in between, um, after the sailing school, I, I did deliveries. And so that sort of, um, uh, I got into, the, um, into Hylus by moving boats around. I started moving Hyluses. I had a little business going on. And, and eventually, uh, Hylus, uh, yacht started to dominate all my delivery work um, so that's how I kind of got into it so I, I um, um, I've had the great fortune of, of uh, probably since 2005 or so I started with 2002 maybe since 2005 or so um, I, I pretty much sailed every Hylus that was built um, that was um, that was uh, delivered in the US either the East Coast or the West Coast um, which is great. It's been an incredible uh, um, experience for me um, sailing these boats and helping the owners learn about their boats and um, helping them move them. And also, um, you know, what's been most fulfilling for me is is getting uh, involved in in, um, in in working on the uh, uh, making the boats better products. Um, one of the great things about um, Hylus that I've really appreciated over the years is that since they're semi-custom. Each owner brings their two cents about how they'd like to do this or that, and um, and all the good ideas sort of you know um, gravitate towards the newer boats, 
And um, and so when you look at right now, I'm in Ohio 60. When you look through the systems in this boat, there are a lot of things that you know. I remember when they first started started um, uh, doing things that, that way because a certain owner came in with this idea, or the yard just decided to uh, upgrade you know some aspect of what they were doing somehow, and then that's been incorporated in the boats ever since. So it's been pretty pretty neat being a uh, part of all that. And, and nowadays, um, I have the great fortune of uh, working more closely with Taiwan and really going through um, all the systems on a regular basis in my new detail and really fine tuning. And, and that's one of, the, one of the great things about the yard is that they're always improving and uh, making the products better. And better. So, so that's where I, where I come from. And, and you know, folks, uh, even folks that I haven't met that own uh, Hyla secondhand, um, I wind up uh, uh, very often helping them uh, via emails or phone calls and so forth as they're learning about their boat when they first get it or if they're trying to uh, upgrade um, things in their boat um, or do a refit, that kind of thing. I often get involved in that sort of thing. So some folks I might not know uh, in person, but uh, we had email exchanges and so forth. And, and I love that. So please, if anyone is involved with Hylus, if you ever have anything that you want to Bounce, uh, you know, bounce some ideas off of, you know, give me a shout. I'm always there. Thanks, Christian. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think anybody who, who who talks about the Hylus brand, the customer service side of it and the support they receive is is absolutely integral to the the overall philosophy of, of what the brand means. So you're such a large portion of that. You've been, you, you've got such a long history with the company. So um, you've always done a fantastic job for the owners. So thank you. Um, Ryan, I see you're on here. Uh, I know you just stepped off of a flight. So Ryan, are you, are you tuned in yet or? Oh, doesn't look like it. So, all right. So we'll get, uh, we'll go on over to, uh, to our friend Roger over in the UK. Roger's been with, uh, Hylus Yachts. I think you were telling me since 1995. Is that right? That's correct. 1995, I first um, purchased my first Hylus. Um, I wasn't thinking of representing Hylus at the time. I was a, a mere client. And But when I ordered my boat, I wanted to, I had certain requirements and specifications that I wanted to put onto the boat. So I took the trouble of going to the, to the yard. And uh, I must admit, it is a fantastic experience to go there. Um, you'll never forget it, that's for sure. And I've been going there for 25 years now, so and I still enjoy every time um, when I go there. So I can highly recommend it to anybody who's thinking of purchasing a boat. I represent Hylus in Europe, and um, sometimes we find the Americans get lost and they find they end up in England, and we're happy to look after them if they end up on our shores. But Eventually, they turn right and end up down going through the Mediterranean, but we can still cater for them if their need, the needs must. If they, if they get stuck with anything, we're always at the end of a telephone call where we can help. Now, I'm very lucky to experience seeing the three generations of Hylas. Um, I know the grandfather, and obviously I know Jane and Joseph very well, and Andy and Peggy were children when I first went there, which I'm not very proud of, but um, it's nice to see that I'm still seeing them grow up and uh, seeing them take over and run this company and going to make it really successful. So I'm really pleased that I'm still around to be part of it. So I'd like to wish them all the best as well. So um, good luck with it. And I'm still here hanging in in Europe. Well, it's pretty difficult over here at the moment, but uh, never give up is my motto. Thank you, Roger. All right, um, and I'm going to bring up. Uh, oh, there's Ryan. Ryan, are you? Co he's connecting still, real quick. So I'll, I'll jump over here. I'm going to call on Dave Powers, because Dave, you're another long timer. You've been uh, involved with the brand for well some years in in multiple capacities, and now you're a member of the Dave Walters Yachts team, uh, representing the boats on the new boat market. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background, Dave? Well, I haven't been around as long as Roger, but uh, in uh, ninety nine, nothing to be proud of. Yeah, ninety nine. A good friend of mine purchased the Hylus fifty four number six, um, and um, uh, that's how I got uh, involved on in the edges. I did a little work on that boat um, after he bought it, 
Uh, and then somehow, and I don't remember exactly, I ended up uh, doing a couple deliveries um, uh, from Los Angeles up to San Francisco and then from San Francisco back south uh, to Mexico. And um, I had my own rigging and marine electrical business in Marina del Rey at the time, still do. Um, but in around, uh, I guess, 2001, just a day before Christian, um, I started uh, helping out with the boat shows and commissioning the boats everywhere but in Florida where there was another electrician that worked there. So I, uh, I stayed doing uh, commissioning and then uh, much like Christian, instructing the owners on how to use the boats and explaining systems and working at the boat shows uh, up until 2013 or so. Um, and then I stepped back a little bit, uh, getting a little older and maybe smarter. Um, I went into sales. I worked at another large brokerage um, for a couple of years until Josh and I met, uh, coincidentally, in the sale of a 46. And uh, so I jumped ship, uh, moved to David Walters, and uh, fortunately uh, came full circle um, about a year ago when uh, they began uh, talks to represent Hylas, and uh, here we are today. Um, as a sidelight, uh, Peggy and Andy, when uh, uh, Peggy was at USC and Andy was still, uh, I think, in high school, um, they lived just a few blocks away from my mom. So uh, I got to meet them just uh, kind of serendipitously um, and uh, it was kind of nice to make the, uh, the connection. So um, here we are today. Here we are. That's right. Thanks, Dave. And uh, last, certainly not least, uh, George Eberhardt. George, you've been a broker at Dave Walters Yachts for a number of years, uh, and now you're, uh, you're on the new Hylas sales team. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background with the brand, your experience, and, uh, and uh, you know, how you came into this. And I, I think, George, you might be on mute right now. There we go. Good morning, everybody. Uh, as Josh said, uh, I've been with David Walters um, for almost 10 years now. And um, I can remember even in the, um, uh, in the early um, years of joining David Walters, uh, David uh, had established himself as selling quite a few of the Hylas yachts. And um, so they were uh, boats that were near and dear to us. We had sold many, many of them. And uh, as I uh, uh, gained momentum in the industry, I uh, started selling quite a few Hylas yachts as well. Um, my background is I've been a sailor from uh, the time I was a young boy uh, on Inland Lakes and then uh, on the Great Lakes and then after moving to Florida, um, done a lot of sailing. And it's just something that uh, from the very beginning of, uh, of my life, I knew that this was something that I wanted to spend uh, a lot of time doing and, and being a part of. And when I became a broker, I was able to put that uh, into a practical work experience and um, the old proverb, if you do something you love, it's, uh, it's really no longer a job. And, and that's the way that I look at uh, being a broker for David Walters and, and now being part of the Hylas team. Um, one of the interesting things that I thought of as we were preparing as a broker, um, you know, it's very interesting. I've sold some, the same boat uh, a number of times, uh, three different times. And it's kind of interesting. They're almost um, in annuity. And I started thinking about that when it came to Hylas Yachts and many other brands I've sold two and three times over. And the Hylas boats, I've sold many of them, but it seems like when I sell a Hylas, uh, I found a home for a long, long time. The buyers have been looking for that perfect boat. And it seems that when they buy a Hylas, I don't hear from them very soon because they're off sailing the globe. They've really found the right boat. And I, I believe that it's uh, a testament to the brand, uh, the history and the build quality of those boats. Um, so people tend to hang on to them a little longer. And I don't know whether we've got any real data uh, as far as Hylas yachts, and owners keeping their boats longer than other brands. But I would uh, think that I could go out on a limb without risking much and saying that that is accurate and it's probably maybe close to two times as long as other owners own different brands. So just a testament to the brand that I'm very fortunate to be a part of and, and look forward to uh, where we go from here with the, uh, the new boats. And as you'll see today, we're gonna talk about 
you know, how they all evolved and, and the history of the brand. So I'm just glad to be a part of it. Thanks, Josh. Yep. Thanks, George. Um, let me bring up the team here. We're going to go to the, I call this the Brady Bunch view. So, um, yeah, and, and thanks. I don't think you can talk about the brand without first talking a little bit about the people. Um, because I think at the end of the day, you know, the boats are beautiful. Uh, they can sail, take you anywhere in the world. Um, but I think the reason for that is based on the people that are behind it. So uh, I did just get a, a question and answer here real quick. I'm going to touch on this. Uh, so they're asking if I can give a little bit more background about myself. So um, I'll be happy to. So um, I came into this mix here uh, after, a, after a career. Uh, I grew up on the Great Lakes sailing with my dad. Um, so my earliest memories were out on Lake Michigan. Um, you know, sailing with my father. Uh, I think that's probably one of my earliest memories. Um, I, I did that all through growing up. Went off to school up at Michigan Tech, uh, which continued to get out on the water on um, with a number of different opportunities, both sailing and power boating. Um, after graduating with a degree in mechanical engineering, I went into the Air Force. Uh, I was in the Air Force for about eight years uh, as a combat systems officer or navigator. Um, during my time in the Air Force, I was fortunate enough to be stationed at Hurlburt Field in Destin, Florida, uh, right on the emerald waters of, uh, of uh, the panhandle of Florida. Bought uh, my first boat, fell in love with sailing, and I knew at some point when my time in the Air Force was up, I was going to get into something that was going to be, uh, you know, uh, on the water and, uh, and related to the boats. So. As I was making my transition out of the military, I met uh, Dave Walters, who was uh, a former Marine himself, and we had a uh, very strong and uh, personal connection. Um, he was my mentor when I came into the industry, and, uh, and, and, and Dave had always had such a passion for, for Hylus yachts, both the people, the boats, the owners, um, and I followed in his footsteps and soon understood the reasons why. Uh, I took, uh, took ownership of David Walter's yachts uh, towards the end of 2016 when, when Dave uh, retired. Uh, I was very humbled by the opportunity to take the team forward. And uh, shortly thereafter was my first uh, encounter with Andy and Peggy and, and Kevin for that matter. These guys came into the office and we, we had a good sit down. This was right at the time when, you know, sort of the third generation was getting ready to take over the helm. Uh, and we just talked, talked uh, you know, the, about the, 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 the heritage of, of, of Hylus, the philosophy behind the boats, the direction the company was heading. Uh, and we, we really built a friendship that I think started that day. Um, that continued to evolve over the years until about a year ago when we, we sat down and said, let's make this partnership um, something more permanent and, uh, and enduring. So we all put the best of our skills together uh, to bring forward, uh, you know, the new, uh, new Hylus brand, introducing some new models and some new faces to the team. So I've been very humbled and happy to be a part of it. Uh, Andy, Peggy, David, all you guys, uh, thanks so much for your friendship and, uh, you know, really excited to be, be a part of this with you guys. So, uh, and I know it certainly doesn't, uh, certainly doesn't start with us. This company has a long, long heritage and history. Uh, Andy, Peggy, and that goes all the way back to, to your grandfather, Gino, who we had the absolute pleasure of meeting during our recent trip to Taiwan. Um, so thanks everybody. Um, and I wanna kind of move into talking a little bit about the um, sort of the, the beginnings of Hylus Yachts in, in, in Queen Long. So Andy, uh, the, the company Queen Long, which is the exclusive builder of Hylus Yachts, was founded in 1978. Can you tell us a little bit about what the early years of Queen Long was like and, and how, did the, how did Queen Long uh, come to be? Right. Um, so just to give a little bit, a little bit of uh, the background on uh, Queen Long and how my grandfather actually started the business. So he started off as a, a rice farmer and he had a, a little bit of saving and uh, decided to uh, diversify and invest, his, invest in different business um, to, to, you know, to, uh, to grow the, uh, actually to start a business with his friend. And 
he happened to uh, got into a, a, a lamp developing uh, business and uh, manufacturing, which is uh, the boat building. So he founded uh, Quinlong Long in uh, 70, 78. Uh, that was when he started building the factory. And it took about uh, two years to get it done and took about a year to start producing uh, boats. So the very first boat, uh, which is a Stevens 47, uh, is built in 1981, or delivered in 1981. Um, um, how, did, how did that relationship come about? I mean, the Stevens 47, which really spurred the growth of, you know, what would soon become the Hylus 47 and then the Hylus 49. How did that first relationship form with the very first boat built by Queen Long? So uh, around that time, uh, there are many, many uh, sailboat brands uh, in Taiwan uh, looking for OEM builder. Uh, to build boats for them. So uh, we, we happen to have some connection uh, through, through uh, uh, some friends and that's how the connection got started. And, you know, we started off as an OEM builder and as we developed, as my dad joined the business and he, he, he began to thought uh, on, um, you know, what, how to, how to, how to continue the business. So, he actually went ahead and, and started off uh, the Hylus brand. So and we can talk a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. But it all started really with, with, with the Stevens 47. And then, yes. it, and then it became uh, the, the Peterson 46, right? Which was Correct. another incredibly popular boat, still is today. So the Stevens 47, we built uh, 81 of it in, within 10 years. And the Peterson 46, we built about 30. Uh, within eight years. And when my dad started in the business, uh, he got in 82. And uh, that's when they started building the Hylas. Uh, well, the very first Hylas was produced in 84. And they built 84 uh, of them in eight years. Wow. That's yep. pretty that good. Hylas 44. Hylas 44 built in 1984 uh, and total of 84 of them. Wow. Now, um, Peggy, can you tell us a little bit, tell us a little bit about your, your grandfather. Tell us about Gino. <laughs> uh, my grandfather, uh, Gino, is uh, actually 86 years old now. Uh, he is, you know, he, uh, he has, um, you know, construction company and like also, like, you know, boat building company. So, you know, he's, I remember uh, growing up uh, at my grandparents' house and he, I, I see him, you know, just have his office and drawing table, drawing boats and, or like, you know, uh, the, the buildings. buildings. Yeah. So like, it's always very interesting to me. I guess that's, you know, how I get into, you know, arts and graphic design and <laughs> drawings. So uh, he, he until now he's still like very much in, you know involved in in the boat building business like he he will come to the yard uh you know uh look at look at you know the constructions and like compare the models what we're building and versus what he used to build so like you know we'll learn a lot from from him still and he still give you know a lot of great suggestions and uh, um, he, uh, I would say, you know, we, we all learn a lot from him. And he also, uh, you know, look at how the company is evolved and, you know, uh, is very proud of it, very proud of, uh, you know, what my, my parents uh, has done and what, what we're doing right now. Yeah, and I could see that when we came over and visited the yard, um, when they rolled the first 57 out of the shed and we did the big photo in front of it. And I mean, you could just see how proud he was not only of the boats, of course, but, but of you guys, I mean, that was really, really amazing. So Andy, I'm going to put you on the spot here. What can you say about, uh, 
what, what can you say about your grandfather and, and, and how did, how has he inspired you in, 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 in terms of the, you know, personally and with the company and, and, and he still comes around the yard. So what can you tell me about that? Well, uh, he, he does come in uh, once in a month to check in on us. <laughs> <laughs> check on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He just ha he has to find something to do, um, and and you know, building boats is his passion. Uh, so sense. is construction, uh, building uh, uh, houses, and uh, but you know, build. He he never really learned how to sail. Um, so you know, it, it's I guess as a boat builder, <laughs> that was one of his. Uh, uh, this advantage and, and you know what what he regret um, the most which is not to learn how to sail he did enjoy sailing qu quite a bit uh, but well when, when when I was growing up you know he, he's he's always uh, he's very tough you know he and as a serial entrepreneur um, he really likes to explore different ideas and uh, uh, you know different way of of making things and different kind of business. So he gave me uh, a lot of uh, uh, different ideas and, and um, well, I guess opportunity, you know, very fortunate to be here uh, building boats with my family, uh, with you guys. Yeah, well, well thanks Andy. Um, yeah. What was the, I mean, what was the yard like back in 1978? I mean, you know, in, in terms of its, the location, the, 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 the infrastructure there, I mean, started from, from nothing. And then your grandfather built it. And in a short few years, you were building boats in, 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 in pretty substantial quantities. Right. So the yard is located in Kaohsiung, uh, Taiwan, which is a southern part of Taiwan. And it's very close to, to the uh, uh, Kaohsiung airport and also the shipping port. Uh, my dad, uh, my grandfather, uh, had a really good eye, you know, for, for where the factory should be. Um, the, and, and there are many, many suppliers, uh, around our shipyard as well. It's sort of, uh, little via radio, uh, of, of Taiwan. Uh, you know, all the boat builders are around us and all the suppliers and, uh, fabricators. And we have a very good, uh, ecosystem and good network. Um, with other builders as well. So the yard, um, you know, obviously we started off with uh, nothing around us and now <laughs> it's all built up. And if you ever visit the yard before, um, you, it, the, the biggest impression of the yard is there's so many trucks mm -hmm. around the yard. Uh, you literally have to pass through all the other shipping container trucks uh, to get to the yard, which is kind of scary, right, Josh? Yeah, I, we've seen it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So that's that's where the yard is. And uh, back in the days, uh, we're building about uh, average on average about ten, fifteen boats a year. Um, at the at, at most, uh, we were building thirty boats a year. Uh, that was when we were building a lot of uh, chartering uh, uh, boats for chartering business. So that's so the the early years of the yard seventy eight to like the mid eighties was really focused in on you know those those first three models the Stevens forty seven the Peterson forty six and then the Hylas forty four um, correct you know both the Stevens and the Peterson you were building under a different brand um, but then the yard made a transition and and started building near exclusive uh, for for the 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 brand it established Hylas yachts so. What what spurred the uh, what spurred the establishment of the yard's own brand? I mean, where did that come about? And and what was the in the early days? What was the philosophy of the brand? And and what was its target market? Why 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 establish the your own brand? Right. Uh, so back in the days, uh, we're, we're, most most of the boats are uh, uh, production, and. A lot of, uh, I guess, it has to do with the the whole uh, U.S. chartering business as well. Back in the days, um, we we did, in fact, uh, we're, we're kind of focused on uh, the the you know the Petersons and the Stevens. Uh, when you know, as you know, when a new generation come into a business, there's always a different ideas, 
there's always a uh, uh, different ways of seeing things mm. and, and the business how, and how you should work. So my dad uh, realized that there will be problem building boats for um, someone else mm. and that we should really have our own brand. So he went to the States and found a marketing firm to design the, uh, the highest brand, the highest logo, um, you know, and the highest word itself is a Greek mythology. Um, and then he went to Ferris uh, to design the very first Hylus 44. And that's how we established uh, a, a relationship with Ferris. Uh, Ferris has uh, exclusive um, uh, contract with uh, very few major builders and he will never re uh, design for anyone else. Uh, we ha we're very lucky to be one of them. And thanks to my dad, I think. <laughs> Well, and, and Frayers was, I mean, really, Frayers had designed, aside from, you know, the, the Hylos 49, which, you know, evolved from the Stevens 47, Frayers was the designer of the, those first early models. So, right. yeah, and, and it continues today, even with the introduction of the brand new Hylos 60. So there's a lot of heritage just in the design team. So I'd like to show you guys uh, um, some images. I'd mm -hmm. like to share my screen. Yeah. Yeah. This is in fact the uh, uh, the first uh, first design, Hylas uh, forty four. Yeah. Wow. And you can see that with the Taiwanese flag on. <laughs> that's that's hand sketch sketch, by the way. Um, and here are some images uh, uh, of, of, of the yard. I'm not sure who that guy is. But <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that doesn't look like Gino. <laughs> I'll make sure I put yours next, uh, Josh. <laughs> Here is the test tank. Uh, so one of the things that my dad did uh, when he joined the business, uh, he convinced my grandfather to uh, put a testing tank. And of course, this is a, a testing tank that holds a, a 50, 56 foot uh, sailboat. So this one is a uh, 44. So back in the days, uh, a, 40, a 56 feet long testing pool is big enough. And now it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> now it's now it's not. <laughs> so uh, here um, is my grandfather uh, sailing. Uh, that was uh, in in the in, in the eighties when we're building the, uh, the 44s. And also the power boat. We did uh, in, uh, in, in around 84, we did build about 30 of the, uh, the highest power boats, um, mainly just to explore different options uh, to diversify the line a little bit but it wasn't, it wasn't very successful. So uh, we discontinue that line. That's the office. That's back in the eighties, Andy. Wow. Correct. So that's, Correct. that's the office that you were running around in when you were a little kid. <laughs> yes. That's pretty neat. So and then in, um, in the 80s, that's when really the, the, the real highless models started to take prevalence, you know, over the, the uh, earlier uh, models that you were building for other, other manufacturers or other, um, other brands. So Correct. you had the Hylus 44, the 47, and then you just mentioned Hylus was building two power boats at the time, the 41 and the 53. So in the, in the early 
early days of Hylas Yachts, you know, what was it that, you know, what was the initial concept and philosophy of the brand as it was established and what was really the focus of the company at that time? Uh, it seems, uh, uh, I think a lot of it was on the charter fleet. Is that correct? Uh, well, actually, initial, when they started initially, it wasn't just for the charter fleet. Um, it was, oh, okay. So it was, um, uh, I guess, you know, the market determined what your product will be and is. So the, you know, we happen to be very affordable, uh, good quality, and we can build boats uh, very quickly. So uh, people, a charting company will come to us and ask us to build 30 boats uh, on order. And, you know, we can produce within uh, two years of time. And, you know, that happened to be became the, the business uh, back in the days. And, you know, early on, um, you know, Hylas Yachts was building boats, both for private use and charter. And the, by building the boats in the charter fleet, the brand really under, learned to understand and appreciate what makes for a good cruising boat. Um, and the feedback you were getting out of the charter fleet was directly input back into the production of the boats themselves so that when folks were moving down to charter these boats, they came back from their vacations and they said, that was such an incredible experience. I want one of those boats myself. And so you took a lot of those lessons learned from the, 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 the cruising in the charter down in the Caribbean, the Bahamas, and then refined the boats for private use. And that's really one of the evolutions of the brand in those early years was taking it uh, and, and really refining uh, the key qualities and characteristics that make for a good cruising boat, but adding a little bit more luxury and refinement for, for private yachts. So um, that was right around, you know, that, that was in like the, the late eighties and the early nineties. And that was right around the time where your, your father started uh, at operations at Queen Long and, and, and started working alongside your grandfather. So um, what can you tell us about the company around the early 90s? Uh, well, it, it's, it's actually quite tough. Um, the, back in the 90s, uh, there, there are quite a, quite a few uh, builders actually went busted. Uh, and we, 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 you know, we survive. We have to pivot. We have to change our our the way we operate the, the, the business. Um, and so we move from uh, doing, doing a, a chart, building a lot of production boats uh, to private yacht, private owned uh, sailboat and adding a lot of, a lot of uh, luxury, luxury in this, in, in, in the boat, in the product itself. And being able to customize uh, is, is, what we were able to offer and that attract people, uh, you know, they just charter a high list, um, in the Caribbean and they came back and they have different ideas and they wanted their own input in, in their boat. And that's just, that is our advantage. And that still is now, um, even after, uh, 20 years. Yeah. And, and that was, uh, one of the early, uh, sort of core competencies of Hylas Yachts was the ability to truly translate a, 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 an owner's dreams and vision for their boat into something they could physically build. Um, and you had a couple of advantages as a Taiwanese boat builder, both from uh, the value standpoint, the quality of your workforce, the materials you had at your disposal, and you know, your willingness to build a boat that was truly unique. Um, right. So how was it that, how did, let's talk a little bit about your father and how that transition occurred and, and what is it that, what remained the same and what changed when your father sort of stepped into more of the operations role? Well, uh, so what remained the same, I guess the, the building, the, the, <laughs> <laughs> the land is still there. Um, you know, the company now has, has, all my dad's DNA over it. So it's, you know, it, it's it, everything, it's, it's him. It's very, it's very clean uh, um, compared to other yards uh, around us. And my dad has, has its own way of operating. You know, he's, he's, still, in, he's still very involved uh, from the day-to-day -day, uh, operation. 
Um, so is my my mom Jane, um, as you guys may can have a lot of uh, contact with her. If everybody you're, who's if you're a owner. Hylas knows Jane. <laughs> correct, correct. Um, so uh, my dad, you know, he he changed quite a bit uh, from how you know when he took over the company, and that is that is very na natural. You know, it's it is what. You know, it has to move on and people change. Uh, we, we have uh, quite a few employees uh, here. Well, not maybe maybe three, four employees that went through the three generation. Wow. Uh, that are still, you know, he, they're still working here. Uh, but a lot of them actually retire. Uh, we just went through a, a, a retire phase uh, a few years ago as well. Uh, they're they're all seventy plus, and you know, they, we have to change and bring in new blood. So uh, it's a it's a generational thing, and I mm -hmm. believe you know in the next few years, uh, you know when when I really really uh, take over the company, um, it it will it, there will be a lot more different things uh, in the in, in at Quinn Long and also at Hylas. You know mm -hmm. we're bringing in. 3D modeling. We're bringing in uh, 3D design software, a different system uh, to build boats, a different concept, different design. So, you know, yeah. it, no, and, it, and every step back. along the way has been an evolution, and it, it's right. that's exactly right. So, the company evolved from you know the early years when uh, when when Gino, your grandfather, was running things, to when your father father started to step into that role. So. Peggy, what do you what do you recall about you know those years when you know sort of that transition from your grandfather to your father? Um, what do you recall from that, that sort of that that '90s period, uh, early 2000s? Uh, so I I have to say during those times I uh, I'm actually in in the states and you know I. I went to school there and I had my own career. And so I don't really spend a lot of time in, ta in Taiwan and or mm -hmm. at the yard. I only get to go back uh, once a year. Um, but what I can see is um, I, I do see a lot of faces that, you know, like I, I see them when I, when I was like little kid, kindergarten, <laughs> you know, like, you know, I still recognize a lot of workers like you know every time i go back they're still there and um you know like the staff in in the office they're you know they all they're all there for like 15 more than 15 years some you know 20 years and you know just seeing the same faces mm -hmm. uh, it's a family yeah, yeah, it, yeah it's a family you know even even you know the cook who cooks for uh, 80 people every day My for lunch. My restaurant in Taiwan. She, yeah, she, <laughs> she is with the company for almost 20 years. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> so but how, how, that, how is the, your, your, your father's role in this? How has he, how did, how is your father and your mother, how they influenced the way that, you know, you're really taking charge of the company today and what, what did you learn from them that is now being put into practice today? Um, well, of course, I, you know, I, I'm learning a lot of, uh, you know, the construction side, you know, the boat, boat building. Uh, it's, it's quite, it's quite new to me. Uh, I've been, you know, with the company three years, but uh, I can see how, you know, my mother uh, on the other side with client relationship uh, on the service side. Uh, that's what I learned a lot from uh, from her. Uh, you know, I, I hear all these compliments from owners, uh, you know, like always just say how how good, uh, you know, Queen Long or my mother, yeah. uh, helping them with the boat with, you know, any question they might have. So, uh, you Jeez. know, I'm taking that as you know doing the same here in the states uh you know uh, a lot of great relationship with the owners um you know i become good friend with them you know go out sailing sail with them peggy's got something that the uh if i can just interrupt one second she's got sailing miles 
Yeah. Peggy's going over 15,000 offshore miles now, going back and forth uh, on, a, on our old Hylus 54. And mm -hmm. uh, she, she just did a, uh, a trip. Uh, we both were on a trip uh, to Iceland, uh, yeah. the Faroes, and then to Scotland last July on a Hylus 63. So she's, she's out there sailing. She's, uh, and, and Andy has too. Andy's been out uh, sailing uh, back and forth between, um, uh, who is it? Right, he did, he did a and, delivery from ta uh, Taiwan to Thailand. So we, I, I think we, you know, we both like, you know, uh, getting a lot of experience and we both are uh, making lots of good friends, you know, with, the highest owners and the, the uh, sailing community. Absolutely. And, yeah. the, you know, so with the, just this relationship is incredible. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the things I would say, Peggy, you know, you've done a phenomenal job. And, you know, when I was over in Taiwan, I saw the way that your, 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 your mom, how Jane operated. Uh, we've, ex I mean, I've, I've personally exchanged, I can't tell you how many emails with, with your mom. And I'm telling you, she is on, on, on point. You know, she has been, I, I mean, I think every Hylos owner over the past 20 years in some way has, 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 has a, had a connection there with your mom. And you are taking that role on now yourself and you're doing it in the exact same light, which I think is really, it's, 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 it's pretty interesting to observe from, you know, sort of an outside perspective, but you are definitely modeled after your mom and you know, you're doing all the same things that she has been doing for 20 years. So that's been uh, that's been pretty incredible to see. So now, David, now you you came into the family, and yes. you you've had the opportunity to. I mean, you've you've you are now. I mean, you're you're in it. <laughs> and so, what can you tell me from your perspective on the whole history of you know from from Gino to you know Jane and Joseph now to Andy and Peggy? How has that that sort of the three generations, how has that evolved and what do you still see? And, and, and you know, Peggy's probably going to kick you under the table, but how do you see, you know, Andy and Peggy having learned from Jane and Joseph and Gino? Well, it's, it's very, very exciting to, uh, to, to, to watch this whole uh, third generation kind of come into its own. And, and while listening to Andy talk about how, uh, 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 Gino started and then uh, Joseph came in and his DNA was all over. I'm starting to see that right now. And it's, it's just so exciting because I, I watch the evolution of how these boats are being built. And, uh, and it, it's as an owner and knowing what the brand was producing and what they're producing now and seeing just the, the technology and innovation and struggle, you know, to, to do the right thing, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that's really what it's about with this brand and that, that, you know, they don't take the easy road and, and it, it's hard to watch sometimes because to be the best at something or to be considered one of the best, you, you have to do the right thing. And the right thing may mean spend more money on, you know, qu you know, quality bills and getting the right people in there to, 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 to design the boats, uh, getting new technology in there to, to build the boats faster but better at the same time. That's, that's hard to do. And, um, and I know Andy, Peggy, Jane, Joseph, Gino, they all are, they all want the best. You know, this is not an easy thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's very similar to the music business and music film entertainment business. It's, if you want to do the right thing, you have to put the right quality out there. And that costs money. And if you're not into it with your full heart, you'll lose because it's hard. And going back to what George said earlier, um, if, if, if your job is something that you love, it's never work. And um, I think that's really the, the, the combined uh, effect of the three generations. It's they're doing something that they love. I'm doing something that I love, so it's not work. 
sometimes it's work. But, uh, <laughs> but I think it's always <laughs> work. But I mean, everyone, that everyone, for everyone just, enjoys it. You know, and I, we, I, love, we love the community. And I think introducing Peggy into the, because I'm, I'm a big part of the sailing community. So between Peggy and I, and, and now we're, you know, she's introduced me to, to people in the industry and I'm introducing Peggy to, uh, you know, to, to the, to the sailing industry. And it's, it's, it's awesome. It's just so much fun. That's well, I think, uh, David, what you described there is very accurate. Um, you know, I think it, it, if for anybody who's ever been to the yard or anybody who's ever met, you know, Andy and Peggy, the family, you know, your, your mother, your father, Gino, um, you see a lot of pride and you see a lot of care, uh, not only in the boats, but for the people. Um, and that to me was one of the most powerful things that we observed uh, when, when we just recently returned from our trip um, to Taiwan. Uh, I had a couple of members of the David Walters Yachts team. We went over to Taiwan. We had the opportunity to sit down uh, and, 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 and really, I mean, sit around a table with three generations of, of, of Hylus Yachts and get a full in-depth two-week experience for what that really means um, you know, to not only to the family, but the employees. Uh, and that was, that was, you know, the boats, those were impressive. Those were beautiful. But what was most impressive to me was that level of connection between the people uh, and the pride and the care um, among everybody. So, um, you know, and, and that's, a, that's a good transition there because now Andy, Peggy, uh, you know, and, and gang, <laughs> you know, we are moving to that third generation where, you know, you guys are going to be taking the helm. You're going to be taking the company forward, um, but there's a whole lineage behind you um, in, in, in support and, and, and pride, I think. So, um, you know, I want to get, uh, I think, oh, Christian had to run, but Roger, you've, you've been with you know, Hylas, the family, Queen Long for, for years. And, you know, <laughs> I won't date you here, but you said 1995. So you've seen a lot of this firsthand. So what can you talk from your perspective? You know, what has that evolution been from your involvement to today um, in, in sort of your observations of the, the heritage of the company? Well, it's been tremendous, the changes that have taken place, because in 1995, we never had this media of communication. Everything had to be done by fax or by letter. And each page of a fax cost about five pounds a time to send. So we were all a bit reluctant to send faxes or you know, communications. And there was a communications problem in Taiwan because really only Jane and Joseph ever spoke English. So you really needed to go, if you wanted to have your boat built properly, you really needed to go there and, um, oversee and see what was going on. Um, the, the pollution levels used to be horrendous because Kaohsiung used to have um, massive industry in the docks and had a big ironworks there. So um, that's also, and a nuclear power station as well, not around the corner. So the, the changes have in the last 20 years have been quite phenomenal. You know, the standard of living has gone up over there. But getting back to the highest, people um something that joan and joseph have always done and i'm sure that um uh, andy and peggy will do the same is that they really looked after their staff um every on all the years that i've been going there there's virtually hardly any change um and it doesn't matter whether they're on the shop floor or whether they're sitting in the office um, it's just fantastic and one of the reasons is that they always look after the staff i mean if you ever had lunch in the factory it's like going to a michelin star restaurant i mean it's phenomenal it's just fantastic um really i mean they've peggy and andy have both got the desire to succeed and that's the telling sign and you know they will they will get there eventually <clears throat> pretty difficult times at the moment but if they see their way through this mm -hmm. it can only be one way for success for them after that yeah so, yeah I uh, can't really tell you much more about them because they get too big headed, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well played. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, well, let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, so, sort of the more modern 
uh, you know, more, more current times with, with Hylus yachts. Uh, and before we get to what's happening today, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the sort of 2010 uh, to, you know, let's say, you know, 2015. You really had a, a, a shift towards the larger models, a lot of systems improvements, more refinements. Um, you know, that had to, that had to involve a lot of operational, um, you know, our operational and, and, and structural changes, um, certainly with the increase in the size of the yachts that Hylus was building. I mean, you talk about like introduction of the 70, the 63, uh, even the 66 was earlier, earlier in the 2000s. But at what point did, you know, Hylus kind of make that transition and, and say, you know, we're going to focus on that larger semi-custom boats? Um, So, mm -hmm. I can, okay, yeah. Um, thank you for the question, Josh. Uh, so, the I, I think it's it's uh, very natural that the the uh, the the models are going to be bigger and bigger because uh, based on our client base, you know, which you know we built five hundred boats already uh, plus and still growing. Uh, most of our owners started off with uh, the 40 something the 46 uh, there's a lot of 44s you know a lot of 46 and uh, a lot of 49s uh, they'll, they'll probably accounted for 300 a good 300 uh, of the units of them and people move up uh, to the to a bigger boats and and it's you know it, it is the natural of um, uh, people's desire and they always want to uh, a bigger bow and safer bow and uh, it's mental and mm -hmm. so based on the uh, desire based on the demand uh, we did we started to push more uh, more and more on the bigger model mm -hmm. and even though the they're they're more expensive that they're higher value uh, and we can only build very fewer of them uh, but you know, overall, uh, they do provide a very good finance for the company. Um, so mm -hmm. it, we 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 move that way. You know, we we move towards uh, building a bigger boat based on the demand. And even till today, you know, it, it, running through all the numbers, um, because of the 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 world shipping, and you know that probably is accounted for 10% of the boat uh, depends on sizes, but it's quite expensive to ship uh, smaller boats uh, and to build smaller boats. So, you know, building bigger boats seems like a no brainer. Uh, it's more profitable for um, uh, the company and there are more demand on it as well. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we're building. Uh, yeah. Few, uh, a lot more 50s to 60 something to 70 something and there are even people asking uh, for a bigger boat which I don't think we'll be able to, to uh, uh, produce that right now <laughs> but <laughs> so you never with, know right yeah yeah exactly so with the uh, you got to build a bigger test tank <laughs> exactly or well, we'll just put it in the ocean yeah. So, but with the evolution of the larger models, you know, you had to incorporate a lot of changes, you know, from the operation standpoint in terms of the skill of your labor to, uh, and, you know, be able to engineer and build larger and larger systems. So how has that, that, that shift towards the larger models, how has that affected, you know, sort of the workforce, um, the skill level and, you know, what has Hylus done to really um, bring in the best uh, whether it be carpenters or engineers or or mechanics to to really put you know these quality boats together, how has that evolved? So it really gets more complicated as the uh, the boat size in, uh, increase, and the very first thing that people will will do is bring in a captain or um, a surveyor to help assist uh, the build. So you know that is something that we have encountered uh, mostly on the six uh, seventy. Uh, highly 70 project and uh, you know, will have to cope with it. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, um, technical stuff uh, that we have to go through uh, 
like CE requirements and the ABYC requirements, which, which we're we're now focusing on. Um, but just from the technicality standpoint, um, the system, the wiring, the plumbing gets uh, a little bit more difficult, and there are more equipment on board. Uh, to the you know, if you're talking about seventy, there's a lot of hydraulic uh, equipment on board, and um, you have to watch out for the um, the structural. So we do also work with the uh, naval architect to make sure that we can accommodate all those changes and requests um, and add on for the equipment. And so the workers definitely have to improve as well. Um, but one one of the biggest thing that my parents did is, you know, during their time of building bigger boats, uh, they actually have uh, uh, more engineers to uh, uh, read through the manuals and design the systems. Um, you know, we're working with CAD, so uh, we can go back and forth with the uh, suppliers. So I, yeah, I, I don't really see any problem with that. Um, we mm -hmm. we have already um, overcome the the difficulties of uh, building bigger boats. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, we, we, we are producing very, very good, uh, high end, strong, big boats. <laughs> I think there's a lot of testaments out there on the seventies and the 63. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, these are boats that, you know, you go to any anchorage around the world and you'll, you'll find a Hylus. And if you happen to find two Hyluses, they tend to be right next to each other. So, uh, you know, I think these tend to be pretty well proven, uh, you know, and, and you've had a lot of, uh, you know, not only the family that op runs and operates the company, but the, the employees there, the, uh, you know, the specialists, many of them are generational as well. I mean, you have, you've, you have employees that their father worked with the yard and now they work with the yard and, and you've had a long history of uh, folks who have been there for a long time. I mean, if you talk about like, like Michael, I mean, Michael's been there for, for years uh, and, and Christian yeah. as well, who's largely uh, in, involved in the, uh, the production side when he's working with a client going over there to the yard on occasion to, to, to add his expertise. So, so yeah, one of the, uh, uh, the main uh, focus here now is you know, how do we carry on? How do we um, uh, make it a generational mm -hmm. uh, thing of, you know, how, how, we, how the company is run. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everybody is training for uh, someone mm -hmm. uh, to, not to replace them, but, um, you know, to, pre you the mentor, know, to, to the mentor. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, uh, that, that is something that everybody is focusing on right now. Yeah. Um, and it has to be done. And I think we've been, uh, we have been doing a good job of that, on that. Yeah starting from my parents. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, you know, and I know we observed that when we were at, uh, at Queen Long, you know, everybody had somebody that they were learning from. And yeah. so you we're, we're had... working with, uh, uh, schools, uh, carpentry school, furniture design schools to, mm -hmm. to get students and to do internship so they can come and do internship. Um, and then we hire them at, right after they, they graduate. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, there, there are many programs in Taiwan that uh, we kind of focus on that. Yeah, and, and you've made a, a, a very concerted effort to, um, to support sort of the Taiwanese boat, boat building industry. I mean, it, it, that was one of the things that stuck out to me was in, in overall, in general, I mean, in, in Taiwan, the various manufacturers, they are all supportive of each other in lending their expertise and their knowledge all the way from the suppliers to the individual boaters, you know, uh, builders themselves. I mean, when we were over there, we went and toured a, a variety of different manufacturers who so willingly opened up their doors and, and gave us a look around. Uh, and everywhere we went, uh, I remember that the networking event we all went to at Church's Fried Chicken <laughs> with all the young boat builders in Taiwan. Uh, it was it was one big family, which I think even going beyond just simply highless yachts, the Taiwanese boat building industry is so well networked together and supportive of as a whole. Um, and they I think that, that speaks a lot about the culture and, and, and the people as well. So that was pretty incredible. Yeah. 
So we used to have uh, two, 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 two to three hundred uh, builders in Taiwan. Uh, now we have gone down to um, somewhere around 40, 30 to 40. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as number gets smaller, uh, we need to stick together. Mm -hmm. um, and we, most of the businesses are family owned. So mm -hmm. uh, the, the next generation are already uh, in place and they, ha they have been grooming their next generation to come into the company, mm -hmm. which is a good thing to kind of carry the, the company and the whole industry through. Uh, you know the time and I, I you know I'm, I'm pretty fortunate to be here and, and kind of witness that and help build that um, mm -hmm. that every everyone in the building industry in Taiwan is very very nice uh, very helpful so we we do you know we share and, and we gather around and and talk about the issues and uh, the different suppliers and how we can exchange uh, even workers. You know, it, it, we even talk about uh, if you don't have that much uh, carpentry work, you can lend me your workers and um, that sort of stuff. You know, it's it's sharing economy. That's the next um, thing that we're focusing on. You know, it's you know like the Uber and yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the the sharing economy is, is so big and as a new generation that's you know we have to think about how to continue and carry on and utilize the resource that we have and they have and, and in, in overall it, it, it leads to greater expertise in certain segments to where you as a builder have, have, have access to a greater pool of highly skilled talent and I think that's that's certainly one of the things that uh, you know. I know we observed is the level of skill uh, and, and capability of, of the Taiwanese boat builder, uh, even to the individual. It's 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 unparalleled, and I think you've got a great vision for it in making sure that your 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 training of the people, the way that you care and treat them, uh, and the way that you source that uh, that knowledge and uh, and skill, uh, I think is is phenomenal, and that all cumulatively translates into the boats that you build, uh, which I think yeah. is, is one of the core reasons for the, the, the high quality product that we see rolling out of uh, the Queen Long Yard. So, <laughs> so um, we, you, you've evolved. I mean, over those three generations, you've, you've, you've gone through a variety of different models, various stages in the company's history, certainly different leadership. Um, and now here we are today, with you, Peggy, David, and the rest of the team looking towards the future of, of, of what Hylus Yachts is, who they were, maintaining the, 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 the philosophy of the company, but also being forward looking. So um, if, if, talking more about the philosophy, if you could sum up what Hylus Yachts is about, I mean, what is the, what's the core of the company? What is the end result that, uh, that these boats deliver. Uh, it, it's the helping people accomplish accomplish their dream. You know, building a boat that is uh, so amazing, phenomenal, and it's it's you know making people's dream come true and take mm -hmm. which is taking the boat uh, to places that they want to. And uh, it's what they have been dreaming for uh, since they're young. You know, like David, <laughs> and then, uh, that, that was his dream. Right. So yeah. the 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 core the focus is you know building a, a very reliable boat, um, and and make and making exactly what people want on their boat and uh, deliver a good product a good service and to continue to uh, make you know to continue to make good friends with them with yeah. these owners, it's it's like a family we're building a big family. Uh, even with with you guys, uh, with with the David Walters team and with Roger, uh, with everybody, you know, uh, people in the industry. Yeah, well, I think you summed it up well. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, Hylus yachts are here to help people achieve the dream, the dream that they have, and it's not just the boats; it's the whole lifestyle and the experience of it. Um, it's the boat that gets you there, 
but there's so much more that's involved in that. Um, so, yeah. Peggy, you know, in, in your words, you know, what, what do you think about the, you know, the philosophy of the brand? What is Hylus Yachts? I think Peggy wanted to say something quickly. Uh, no, I was just going to uh, uh, say that, you know, uh, Hylus, you know, is a, is a semi-custom yacht. You know, we personalize the, the yacht and the, you know, the, this, this uh, puts, puts on the innovation and personalize a luxury yacht and, you know, helping people fulfill their dreams with their loved ones. Yes. That's very important. Yes. Uh, you know, whether if it's a couple or the whole family or friends, uh, you know, out there, um, it's a, you know, like you say, it's a lifestyle. It's, when it's, you're on a, when you're on a, a yacht, like, like a Hylas, or let's just say any yacht, it, it, it there's such a difference between I, I bought a production yacht um, and I had a great time on it. Um, but what was, what I realized was that I liked the lifestyle and to me that meant I needed a boat that, that I would feel comfortable and safe taking uh, across oceans. If I wanted to continue the lifestyle in a comfortable way, um, you could do this on any boat but the experience will, will vary radically from build to build. And I, I mean, I, I, I love the lifestyle. And, um, but I want, I want the boat to, to be as comfortable as possible, as safe as possible. I want the offshore passages to be as comfortable and quick as, as, as they can be. Um, I do like being offshore, but I, you know, of course, weather, you want to limit your exposure. Uh, so a faster boat does that. And, uh, and it, it allows me to enjoy the lifestyle even deeper than I was, than I was before. And to me, that's why I bought a Hylus. And I realized that most of the other owners of the boats are the same way. They love their boat. They love being on the boat. Any, you know, as a, as a retired, person, uh, which is not me, uh, uh, you don't want to be messing around with the boat and fixing everything and replacing things because the boat's not up for the job and you're putting it through tons of stress. You want to relax and enjoy your retirement and just have fun as a, I mean, working on the boat in a, in a sense is also fun, but if it's too much and it just, it wears you out and it, it, it drains your, your, your purse, you know, it, it's, it's just, it's not a good experience. And these boats, I, I, I know from, from just being in contact with everybody, they're, they're, they love the boats. I, I love our old 54. I was just on her a couple of days ago. Uh, and, and I sold that boat uh, last year. We're building a new 57. And I, I just look at the new build pictures coming from Taiwan every day over and over and over again and uh it, it's just a feeling that you get it I, I can't really explain it you have to be a, a hylas owner to, to know uh so does that answer the question whatever it was i don't even know what it was. well well put well put so uh, just from a, from a supplier's point of view there's nothing more satisfying than seeing a new owner get on his boat for the first time and leave the dock and go sailing in it and that gives us as suppliers a great thrill because you know that you've made somebody very happy. Mm -hmm. Nope, exactly right. Um, Kevin, you know, you've been, you've been involved with Hylus Yachts now um, starting in 2015, 16? Uh, so it's going to be three years in July. Okay, all right. So you have had, uh, you've had a lot of interactions with the, many of the Hylus owners, you know, since, since you came on board with the team. Yep. So you've heard firsthand, you know, the, uh, the opinions and the uh, points of views of many Hylus owners. From the owner's perspective and from your perspective, how would, what, you know, what in your eyes and the owners that you've encountered would you say is, is, is the core of Hylus yachts? What does it mean to be sailing on a Hylus? So that, that really, is what, in my mind, what this all stems from the level of knowledge and sophistication that the owners currently have. 
So over the years, we've got more and more access to how yachts are built, how to handle them, the technology's advanced hugely. And the owners have a level of expectation that is pretty hard to achieve. But what's happening with Hylus, we are a semi-custom builder. We recognize it's important. Andy and Peggy work tirelessly to, to come up with innovation, to come up with new technology, to, to work with uh, designers like Dixon and Frez to make sure that they're at the cutting edge and they are able to accommodate the very unique demands of every single owner. So when the boat turns up at the dock, like Roger says, it comes in from Taiwan, it turns up in America, they get on the boat and it's just all. It's never about, oh, I thought this, or I thought that. Da, da. They, they've been involved at every level. There's been communication throughout. There's been regular meetings. There's been video conferencing. There's been every stage of the production has been monitored to take care of the exclusive demands of every owner. So as Christian is always saying it, he, you know, whenever I say to him, so which one's your favorite yacht? Well, it's whichever one he's ever on is his favorite yacht. But everyone is slightly different. And everyone has the signature of, of the owner. And Peggy and Andy and Joseph and Jane, of course, are, are the people that have allowed that to be able to happen. So there's a level of communication between the owner and production that really does deliver a very highly sophisticated yacht. But let's not forget that behind all of that, at some point, someone had to say to a naval architect, be it Perez or Dixon, we would like you to build us this, and here are the basic parameters. And so often I'm saying to, my, to, to myself, I'm saying to people, so what's the basic parameters? The basic parameters are this. If you own a Hylus, whatever size, crossing an ocean should never be intimidating. Of course, you've got to learn how to do it and manage some stuff as you go, but your yacht is going to take care of you as you cross the ocean. It needs to be easy to handle. So let's talk about how we manage the sail plan. Let's talk about what equipment's on board, be it power winches, power furling, um, you know, generators, what kind of technology do you want in the way of navigational systems? Let's make it easy to do with just a, a few people. Um, and then it needs to look awesome. It needs to look sexy. It needs to turn people's heads. Uh, and once you kind of put all that together, you give it the signature of the owner, you're working with a company that's going to back you for the lifetime of the yacht, not the lifetime and necessarily of even your ownership. They're going to back the yacht. So if you're the second owner, you can call Christian, you can call Peggy, you can call Jane, you can call Joseph, you can call any of the guys and they'll take care of you. So what I've seen coming from a very brand oriented background, I've seen Hylas really step up to the plate even in the last three years and say, we need to embrace change. We need to look to the future. We need to give people what they want and we need to be cognizant that we're running a business. So let's not, let's not go crazy and try and build all of the yachts at all different sizes all the time. Let's really focus on core. And, and Andy was saying early on, he, the, his, his business is market led. If the market genuinely seems to be, and it does, as I see it right now, it's about 60 feet is when you get above 60 and people start thinking about crew and skippers and managing it and that kind of stuff. So we're looking to provide an awesome yacht at about 60 feet, two couples that can cross oceans. And whilst they're hanging out at the dock, they're in, ex it exudes luxury. And they're all part of a great family. So everybody, you know, every highness owner that meets another highness owner, they want to talk about the experience. Even the build, the, the build process is, is part of the fun of owning a new build. Uh, build you know, building your own yacht is, is part of the excitement. Actually going sailing is the icing on the cake, but you know, for a year or to 18 months, you get to meet me and hang out with me and stuff like that. So, and, and, who, and who wouldn't want to, no. All right, we'll put you in touch with some <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's, it's gotta be fun, it's gotta be exciting, and it's never disappointing when the boat turns up. And, you know, when I, I, I represent the brand and I'm, I'm always in, you know, every time I meet a, any, any owner, they're always exuding about um, how good it is, how much fun they've had, where they've been, where in the world they're, they're planning to go, how much fun they have with the family and how cool everybody is that seems to be in this little or big now, pilot's gang, uh, how cool everybody seems to be. And yeah, it's, it makes my, my job so much easier when I can introduce a, a prospective buyer to an existing owner and all they ever do is just rave about Taiwan and Hylas and the family and 
And so all those kinds of things. So yeah, I, I, in, in, I've only been here, like I say, about three years. And in that time, I've seen Peggy and Andy grow phenomenally within the industry and their influence and their understanding of what's going on and what the market really wants. And, and they do, like I can't remember who was saying about how much, um, Mark, Dave, you were saying about the miles. You know, you don't, you don't learn, you can't really understand what your client is saying to you unless you really understand what they're talking about, unless you've been there firsthand. So we have Christian, who is a great resource. He's been on every yacht that Highlands have built in the last 20 years, and probably more, sailed for hundreds of miles, and he's able to take his knowledge to the factory, and he sits there with the guys and says, this is what's practical, and that's not practical. But now, Andy and Peggy are, see, are, are looking through sailors' eyes, and, and, you, and you can see it in their in the decision-making, in their thought process, and in the way they chat, I mean, you know, they challenge me. I'll say, oh, we should do that. And they'll go, well, hang on, Kev. What about this? Oh, good point. Actually, that's a very good point. I love that. Yeah. As, as, as they've grown, I, you know, I've become more and more obviously enamored with their ability, but also the, 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 the yacht itself and the brand itself is, is something I'm, you know, I'm just proud to be part of. It's cool. Yeah, really well put, Kevin. Really well put. Um, and I think your point there about, you know, the, the brand's ability to listen to the individual desires of the builder, uh, you know, of the client who's building the boat, that's one of the, that's one of the most core competencies, I think, of Hylas Yachts, is its ability to listen and translate, uh, you know, their requirements into the boat of their dreams. And, you know, I know you've got several folks right now that are uh, going through that very process. Um, and it is a process. It is fun. It's engaging. Um, and I think at the end of it, everybody comes out and says, that was, that was incredible. So, um, and it, the, so, sorry, Josh, I just on the last thought there, um, I, this isn't my thinking. I was just reading an article about it. And, it, and we, when we were talking about the generations of workers that we have in Taiwan. Um, Taiwan back in the, I think Andy was telling me a bit of the history a while ago, and it was the mid eighties that things really took off in terms of yacht building, sailboat building, that kind of stuff in Taiwan. And between that mid eighties and now we're in the twenties of the next gen, of the next century, that's 40 to 50 years of really fine tuning skills. So Taiwan is now, it's not a place you go to find a value built yacht. I mean, yes, we have the value proposition, and it's important to keep that in mind when you're thinking about buying your next yacht. But also keep in mind that Taiwan is now a center of excellence for yacht building. Mm -hmm. You know, you've had, we had, there was a hundred, like Andy was saying, the, build, the, the number of builders has gone down. The number of years we've been doing it has, has increased. The, 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 the ability to share the, the labor force in terms of the really highly sophisticated, like carpenters, shipwrights, amongst the amongst the uh, other other builders out there working together as a team really makes taiwan a, a really good place to start thinking about building any new york project mm -hmm. it, it has to be um and and it, you know i'm not going to say it make direct comparisons with china but we taiwan does not have a transient workforce so we the the, the those people that have those skill sets stay on the island stay on taiwan and they go to where the the demand is highest, but within the island, so it's just, it's the generations of builders. It's, so there's a level of sophistication and knowledge that really allows anyone that's a custom builder to to, to who wants a custom yacht, sorry, to you should go to Taiwan, check it out, see what's going on because it's it's such a good place to build yachts. Yeah, yeah. And and just to just to add uh, here, uh, the actual dollar value. Uh, did not decrease as the builders gets less. Um, the dollar value actually increased as we're, we're building fewer boats, but bigger size, a lot bigger size. And the suppliers are still uh, there. The, most of the fabricator are, and suppliers are around and they're building more sophisticated project. Um, and so we're able to do more things uh, using more technologies and uh, different techniques. Mm -hmm. So. I, yeah, I think that's that's also another uh, plus for building boats in Taiwan, mm. and we're good at preventing the virus. <laughs> <laughs> Every boat goes up virus. Good <laughs> 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 We're clean. <laughs> that's right. 
So, uh, Andy, I mean, you know, how has that's a that's a good. I know in the middle midst of all this, you know, how has how have you guys been coping with that? I mean, you know, how has the yard been functioning in the midst of global pandemic? I mean, how's that affected your operations? We are uh, operating. Uh, we're we're working very hard on building boats. We we did not stop. Um, we do have uh, uh, you know fewer de a few delays from the suppliers. Uh, but that was because they, they had to shut down. They're located in different countries. But, you know, we figure out, we have to figure out a way uh, to build a boat without receiving those uh, equipments or parts um, and, and do it later. So we're able to cope with that. And we, fortunately, our, our government uh, found the, um, uh, got the information of the virus and start preparing for it. Um, so we are still able to operate and all the Taiwanese businesses are operating as well. So, you know, we're, we're very, feel very fortunate to be in Taiwan and uh, we're able to continue building boats. Uh, without that, I don't think, you know, the business can survive or any business can survive. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. many manufacturers right now that are going through hard times because they can't keep the factories open. So, yep. Um, and I know, you know, we, we, uh, just to add, we, you know, we did not, uh, lay off anybody, uh, and reduce salary or anything, yeah. uh, during this difficult time. So it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very, I think we're in a very good position here. Mm -hmm. Well, but you guys are always taking great care of your people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Peggy? Mm -hmm. oh, the yard is also doing very, very good at the, uh, sanitizing, uh, um, you know, uh, with the workers and checking temperatures uh, every every morning, uh, you know, like give educate uh, the workers how how to uh, you know uh, prevent mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, pay attention uh, to each other and you know you know good at trial if you know we know there's any you know new cases and we will do some uh, you know. Uh, uh, investigation to you know to where you the worker might be exposed to or or whatnot. So you know that we're paying uh, very very cautious uh, to to each workers to make sure they're safe and make sure they're they're healthy. Yeah, well, you guys always yeah, and their family. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. So taking all this history, taking the core competencies, um, the philosophy of the company. You know, where where are we today? I, I know it's a actually it's a it's a in the midst of all of this, it's actually it's a very exciting year for Hylus with the introduction of two brand new boats, brand new models, um, the resurgence of the Hylus power boat line, um, the the growing success of the 48 and the accolades that's been gained from that model when it's been introduced. Um, I mean, it's 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 this is, I would say, more than at any point in the history of the company, one of the most you know, transformative periods for Hylus Yachts. I mean, there is some pretty incredible things happening right now. So what can you tell us a little bit? Let's start with the, the, new, uh, the new sailboats, I mean, the new sail models, you know, the, the 57, the 60, uh, and the 48, you know, without getting too much in depth into each individual boat, uh, because next week we're going to do a whole separate segment dedicated specifically to discussing those models. But where did the philosophy from for those boats, the concepts for those boats come from? Um, and and how did that pull from, you know, the history of Hylus Yachts? So uh, the uh, uh, before we actually start designing uh, these, these new models, um, well, I, I, I guess I should let Roger uh, talk about the 40A um, because you watch he, out. Andy, your mom's watching. He, I know she is. Mom's watching. <laughs> <laughs> She's right next door. Oh, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Roger is responsible responsible for the uh, development of the 40A. Um, so I, I'll let Roger start with that first. <laughs> I could see that um, with the 46 and the 49 and everybody wanting to have bigger boats, I could see that there's going to be a demand for 
a slightly more modern version of those two books. So I thought it'd be a good idea to go and um, explore and, and evaluate, um, bearing in mind that all the knowledge that I had of the 46 and the 49, and try and come up with a concept which would still give them a, a, a starter boat in the highest range, whereas it, was, it just wasn't very cost effective for them to build the 46s anymore. So I thought, well, everybody needs a starter boat and people who buy, hopefully will buy the 48 one day will want a bigger boat and some people just have that boat for the rest of their lives. But uh, so I went away and uh, saw Bill Dixon and um, told him what the parameters were, which I was working to from the knowledge that I gained of selling all the boats that I, I'd sold for Hylas in Europe. And uh, hence we, I came up with the um, design of the 48, which I'd showed to Joseph. Joseph had seen it. And um, so we went ahead and uh, I got a mold made and we started production. And, you know, Hylas have got one there. They have one over there. And I think everybody was pretty impressed with the performance and the boat sailed and the accommodation that you had inside the boat. But um, I was pr proud to be able to give to work with Hylas and on such a project. So I thought I was very pleased. And of course, I knew that they were going to build it to a fantastic standard, which was great. <laughs> may I may I say something about the forty eight? Um, just to uh, you know, I I've been a fan of Hylas for for many many years, and I originally wanted a 46 and then I bumped it up to a 49 and uh, I, I was a big fan of the 49 for a long time and um, and then I finally bought a, a 54 but when I, I, I had a chance to sail the 48 um, on a, a few occasions and one 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 uh, long passage and uh, Peggy and I were on board uh, for the salty dog rally and I gotta tell you that 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 boat is, it, it just, I was a little nervous when, when I heard the 40 being phased out. That boat is incredible. You did an amazing job. Uh, and I, I was coming from a 54 and then going to the 48, the, it, it, it's like, a, it's like a, the, the interior, it, it, it's, it's almost the size of the 54. It's like Doctor Who, you know, with the, the you know, you go inside the, uh, the the, the uh, what's that little telephone booth and it's like huge inside it's uh, it's, it's 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 the TARDIS it's the police box Tardis, yes that's it TARDIS I go in there I'm like what? what it's just like it feels like the 54 the cockpit's actually bigger than the 54 it's truly physically bigger uh, and when we did the salty dog rally last year we we sailed from uh, uh, the Chesapeake to the Abaco, uh, actually uh, not the Abacos, but uh, Eleuthera. Eleuthera this year. Uh, we 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 started almost a full twenty four hours after everybody else left, uh, and we were the first ones down. I mean, the yacht is fast. Yeah, it's a fast boat. It carries a ton of fuel, and um, and Christian and uh, uh, his crew uh, caught up with us. Uh, one year when we were on the 54, uh, you know, south of Hatteras, and they just snuck up on us and blew past us on the 54. So uh, I, I just got to say, from coming coming from, you know, the the Hylas owner and fan for many years, and then to kind of get nervous and be like, oh God, the 49 is being phased out, to be able to actually get on the boat, sail it, mm -hmm. and I totally understand why this boat exists. So thank you, Roger. Yeah, yeah, the, that 48 is, you know, boat. one hell of a boat. It really is. Yeah, if, if uh, I mean, if I knew about it before the 54, I probably would have would have went for a 48 for sure. So and then, uh, you know, the, the other new model, uh, which just arrived, uh, is the 57. Uh, and Andy, that's also another Dixon design. Where did the inspiration for that model come about? Um, and, and I mean, if you look at the lines on that boat, that is so distinctly, it's, it's a modern boat, no doubt, but it's so distinctly hireless in its styling and its lines. How, right. how did that come about? So um, I guess I, I have to start with uh, a little background on the 60 first, mm -hmm. um, because 
uh, with the with the sixty uh, from Ferris, that design, um, you know, the design brief I, I gave to Ferris, and he came uh, back to me uh, with a very slick looking bow, um, but it was it has a lot of um, a, a Ferris uh, DNA in it, and if it's it's not the uh, exactly uh, what people usually know uh, the highlights for, um, but you know it, it's it's it has it still it still is built by us and has a lot of our characteristic our um, uh, flavor in it. Yeah, the quality. Um, but it yeah. it is quality, um, but it is uh, not the same boat that most people would know uh, highlights. For. So uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I was talking to Roger uh, one day, and then uh, that idea kind of came around. You know, we we have to really start a new um, a new model that's uh, closer to the Hylas, and it's the next generation, a new generation, um, because you know every boat is designed. Uh, very specifically uh, w with its water line, with its um, uh, uh, volume and its performance. So, you know, you wouldn't take a design that's from uh, maybe 10 years ago or 20 years ago and just redo the deck. Um, I mean, you can, but it's not the same as uh, designing a new boat because design is always changing and you know, I have a uh, design background and so is Peggy. We both believe that uh, there, there's always going to be new design. The new design um, will be better, will be improvement of the um, previous generation. So, um, you know, we believe it, it, was, it, it, it was the time to uh, start a new, new project. Mm -hmm. And so Roger kind of helped us uh, uh, introduced to uh, Dixon, um, and you know I gave Dixon a design brief, which is very not not too uh, not too different from what I gave to uh, Fres, um, because we we wanted to build a, a highlight. We wanted to build a, a boat that has a highlight DNA all over it. Um, so you know, and I also at the same time I didn't want to restrict. Um, the ability of these uh, of the uh, naval architects design um, to design what what they think it will it will be a highless boat so you know Dixon came back with a 57 and did the everything about that boat is is very highless is uh, the next generation is very forward looking um, very contemporary, but at the same time, the functionality of it, um, it's very in line with uh, um, all the all the rest of the Hylos line. Mm. And interestingly, that uh, even with Ferris 60, um, even though it's a different design, uh, the look is different, but the functionality of it um, is very similar. They both have um, a self tacker. They both are uh, twin rotters, they're even their whole shape are um, somewhat in line, you know. So it, there's a lot of similarities between the two uh, designers, and they all they both have their uh, uniqueness in it. So you know, I really love both uh, models. Yeah, and you know, you can very, you, you can you know, while you're right, the sixty. If you look at the lines of the sixty, it is it's unlike anything that Hylas has built before from a styling standpoint. You know, it's a very, very sleek, low profile boat. Um, but as you just said, from the functionality, um, the core competencies uh, in, in, in the, the mentality of what it means to sail that boat, that is so distinctly Hylas. You could trace that back to the lineage. Of the, I mean, go all the way back to the very beginning of Hylas throughout its entire history has always been a cruising couple's boat to be sailed safely, swiftly, and anywhere that you can desire. Um, 
the 60 is definitely, it's a, it's a new design. It's a modern design, um, but it still holds true to everything that is Hylus. And, and, and then the, the 57, um, you know, same concepts, more of a cruising style boat, um, but yeah, still, still very much a Hylus. So I think it's, a, it's exciting to see the development of the new, new, uh, new sailboat line. Um, and when we unleash and we get back into the swing of things and you start seeing us back at the boat shows, um, I know everybody's going to be really excited to step aboard the 57 and the 60. So, um, Both but, models will be uh, at the fall show this year. Exactly. Now, in addition to uh, you know, the, the new sailboat models, Hylus has dipped its toes back into the powerboat line. And, you know, even at the very beginning stages of Hylus Yachts, Hylus was building powerboats. Um, and we've been really excited to see, you know, the Hylus M44 um, up here in the Chesapeake. Uh, I know Michael is out there cruising in on his boat, and absolutely loves it. You've partnered with, uh, uh, you know, Dean Salthouse, uh, Next Generation Yachts. Um, you know, we've got the M49, which is an extended version of the M44, and now the M58. So... Um, what's, what's prompted Hylus to get back into the powerboat market? Well, uh, again, that's, it's all client demand. Mm -hmm. um, the, mo a lot of our uh, sailors, uh, client, are retiring from uh, sailing. Um, and, you know, as they grow older, um, they, they, want, they still want to boat. So, uh, they, and they like our brand, they like our product, and the, they like interacting with us. So they ask us if we will uh, build our boat, and you know, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's it's easy. It's a no-brainer. Dean Saw House has a really really good design. They have they have a long fa uh, family history in New Zealand, uh, very similar to um, us, uh, Quinlong. Long. It's a they they're you know they they are parents. Uh, Dean's parents started the, the company. Uh, with his brother and and they become um, separated they, they separated and then they have uh, other other uh, soul house companies around and so it, they're they're a big family in the um, in New Zealand and the is the exact uh, Corsair 44 the M44 you know it's a joint venture um, we started off as as uh, OEM uh, producing the soul house 44 for them uh, to New Zealand, and we built about um, eight boats now, um, and we we have uh, we decided to uh, cooperate and branded the powerboat uh, under Hylus and get it into the U.S. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're on hole number two in the U.S. So we at at Quinn Long we built a total of ten now, um, and we believe it will sell really well in the states and. Uh, you know, a lot of our clients are actually expressing a, um, a lot of interest uh, in the Powerball model as well. Um, you know, there is a talk even maybe outboard too, right, Josh? <laughs> Can we say that publicly yet? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, yeah, but that, that holds true. And that goes right back to the beginning where there was a client demand, Hylus is the skill and the capability, and you right. said yes. We can do this. And you've partnered with the, you know, Salt House and the whole family there who, just like you said, is much like the, 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 your family, the, this Hylus brand uh, in, in the way that they conduct themselves and their philosophy. So it, it was a perfect marriage. Um, the boats are absolutely exactly. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And even, even their, um, it, it, the way their family, you know, the way they operate as well uh, is very in line with us. Um, they are really, really nice. And, uh, they always make their payments on time and, you know, they're the, super, to have. <laughs> they're, they're the best people to hang out with too. <laughs> Dean's, Dean's a fun guy to sit around and have a beer with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and Dean has a lot of uh, sailing background as well. So he's very knowledgeable. Um, he knows inside out on his own uh, design, uh, the 44 and has a lot of good ideas. And, and as a, as a, a Kiwi builder, uh, he, as you know, I learned so much from him uh, when he was over in Taiwan. He moved to Taiwan for three months 
just to get uh, the very first hole built, um, you know, a, with his whole family in Taiwan. Yeah. So that, you know, that tells you something. And, you know, we learn different techniques and we, we learn different, uh, the way they operate and things that they do different, uh, the w- different materials that they use. So it's very interesting uh, partnership and there's, you know, there's always something good comes out of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's, uh, it's, it's really exciting to see, you know, first off, it was really amazing to sort of learn about the whole heritage and history of, of your company and then to kind of step in and be a part of that team uh, and to see how that, that whole heritage and lineage has is, is evolved and, and how you guys are taking that forward. So um, Andy, Peggy, David, you know, family, I uh, really want to just say thanks for taking the opportunity to be able to learn, you know, more about really you know, the, the family of, of Hylas Yachts and the team behind it. So um, I just kind of want to pass it around real quick for some closing remarks. But uh, before I do, I just really want to say thank you uh, to, to everybody here. Um, I think the quality of these boats is a direct reflection of the quality of the individuals that are behind it. And I'm not saying that because, you know, you're here, you're my team and our team. Uh, I'm just saying that because, you know, I think it's true. Uh, and that's not just the people that are on, you know, in the Brady Bunch screen today. That's, uh, <laughs> that's true for the owners. It's true for the, the builders, the folks that are, you know, hand building these boats. Um, the suppliers, the community, the Taiwanese boat building industry. I mean, there is so many phenomenal people that all add up to deliver the product that, uh, that you guys ultimately put in the hands of sailors and uh, now power boaters. So um, we're pretty humble to be a part of that. We're really excited to be bringing the brand, uh, you know, into sort of its next next stage uh, and onward into the future. So Andy, I know I joke with you all the time that, uh, you know, we're a couple of young guys we're going to be old men here at some point, still talking about this 40 years later, maybe on some holographic uh, webinar that our children will do in 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> we will. We will. That's right. That's right. So I'll just go around. Um, I want to leave Andy and Peggy. I want to put you guys for last for the closing remarks here. So, um, George, I know you've been kind of sitting over there quiet, but um, you have any closing remarks you want to mention here? Up, oh, you're muted, I think, George. <laughs> oh, still got you muted. There we go. Okay, thanks, Josh. Uh, yeah, I. Um, it's interesting to learn everything <clears throat> and and talk with the family a little bit more for those folks that have joined in. Um, but the one thing that I think is evident. Um, that this family and uh, company has been around for a long time, building wonderful boats. It's a close-knit family, and that if you ever have the privilege and opportunity to be involved and, and get to build a Hylas, you will get to know each one of them very, very well, and the whole team will be there to support you as you move through the process and then out on the water with that boat. And uh, that team will always be there to back up the boat and be available for the next owner and the next owner. And, and that's really something special uh, about Hylas. And uh, I'm just glad to be a part of it. So thanks very much. And uh, I hope everyone has enjoyed uh, tuning in to the story of Hylas. Thanks, George. Thanks. Dave? Let's see. Still got you over there? Yep. I'm here. <laughs> oh, 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 Dave Powers. I'm going to oh. save, uh, save you and Peggy here for <laughs> towards the tail end, but I'm going to bring Dave Powers back up. There he is. Dave. I'm still here, but I'm, I'm wondering if Roger and I really can keep up with this hologram thing that you're talking about. <laughs> I, I'm not sure we'll, we'll be around for that, but um, okay, well, I just echo, yeah, echo what George said is that um, it's, it's great to see uh, things moving forward and taking new shapes and uh, um, looking at the new horizons. But what's really uh, encouraging is that they're not leaving anybody behind. Um, the factory's still there for parts, even on old boats, older boats. Um, there's still support there and questions can be answered. And uh, um, even while we're exploring uh, new parts of the world and country and designs and products and materials, um, they're still there to support the the old 
I say old in an experienced way, uh, members that have boats and, and they're to support them even when they have new owners or maybe even the second or the third owner of a hull, uh, mm -hmm. they're still there and around and keeping everything together. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Um, Roger, you wanna put some parting words into this? i just say thank you for allowing me to be part of it. And um, I think that's great to be part of the Hylas family. And, you know, Peggy and Andy have a massive task on their hands, but they're young and willing enough to make sure that it's going to, I'm sure it's going to succeed. So, uh, and thank you, Joss, for hosting it as well. You've done a very good job. No, thank you. Thanks, Roger. All right. And Kevin. Uh, yeah, so really, first of all, thanks, Josh. Great job. Really appreciate that. Um, uh, Any time I listen to, you know, experience of like Dave and George and you, Josh, and Roger, having any kind of conversation, I learned so much. So thank you for continuing to share that information with all of us. Uh, I really appreciate that for one. Uh, thank you, everybody that's listening for for listening in. Uh, it's always get it's always great to talk highlights and uh, talk yachts basically and get the word out there a little bit. Um, and a closing and I mean I can't help myself I'm a sales guy, but a closing comment would be closing comment would be is that keep in mind that the only reason we continue to be successful is because we have satisfied clients. And if you build experience and the final product isn't exactly what you want, that's going to really damage what happens to Hylas going forwards. So we, like I said before, Andy and, uh, and Peggy and the family work tirelessly to make sure your experience is exquisite from start to finish. Um, but anyway, so I think we get to talk more about specifics about different models and different yachts next week. Thanks for listening in. Thanks for doing a great job, Josh. And thanks for sharing everybody else. Speak to you later. All right. Thanks, Kev. All right, uh, Peggy, Dave, you guys want to share a few parting words with the gang? Sure. Uh, just want to say uh, thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity to share uh, the the history of you know the the Hylas Yar Queen Long Marine and my family. We're very proud of building these you know amazing boats for uh, for for uh, uh, owners and you know see there's the happy smiling face uh you know it's it's just the biggest reward for us and uh thank you josh for putting this together this is wonderful great yeah. thanks thanks guys uh thank you hylas for letting me live a dream and uh, <laughs> marry into the family <laughs> <laughs> You got uh, the best model out there, I'm telling you. I do. <laughs> Careful what you wish for. Uh, I'm, I'm, I can't, words just really don't express the gratitude uh, that I have for, uh, for, the, for the Hylas family, uh, Jane, Joseph, Andy, my wife, Peggy, uh, to allow me to, uh, to help, to help get the word out and, uh, to, to be part of something larger, um, and to be part of the sailing community and to, to just help to build the next generation of, of, of yachts, uh, under the Hylas banner. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, and thank you, uh, Josh and David Walters and Roger and Kevin, Dave, George, Christian, Ryan, the whole family, really. Um, I, uh, I, really, it's just, it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's been great working with you all know, the, the team, the team, everyone, and uh, Dave, David Walters' yacht uh, team and Hyda's team. Barefoot it's Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Everybody, yeah. everybody. It's we're one thing above all. We're a big family, and we all help each other out. And I think that that sets us apart um, from most businesses. Whether you're you're a yachting business or or any business, we're a family, and we help each other. All of us here, and all of our owners, uh, we can all depend on each other. And that's 
that's the most important thing, no matter what we make, mm -hmm. is that we stick together, especially in times like these, um, where things are uncertain. Um, I, I'm very, very happy to be part of that. And I hope to be in Taiwan soon. Uh, we're building our new 57, and I cannot wait. This boat is going to be insane. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Gabe. Thanks. Thanks, Peggy. All right. And Andy, certainly not least. Yep. Um, so it, it, it's, it, it's a very interesting time uh, that right now uh, that we're able to do the, the Zoom meeting. Uh, the webinar and you know I never imagined that I would be doing this um, but here we are and I I guess it, it is the new new way of uh, how we will be sharing more information and hopefully you guys uh, did learn uh, and get to know us uh, by the by the end of this uh, webinar and you know we're always here I, I I'm pretty sure that we'll we'll do more uh, webinar in the near future it seems like it's the way uh, going forward and um, you know we're always adopting new technology <laughs> and a new way of uh, you know promoting ourselves and uh, meeting you guys uh, even online you know <laughs> so thank you guys for uh, listening um, and people who have uh, asked questions uh, those are those are very, uh, very good questions. And, you know, I hope you guys like uh, the content today and, you know, we'll, we'll ask any, ask us any question, ask, uh, um, email us anytime. Um, we'll be here. That's Thank right. you. Yep. Thanks, Andy. Thanks so much. Well, I, uh, I really hope everybody enjoyed this. Um, I know we certainly did. Um, I think, like I said in the very beginning, you can't understand the, the you know, highless boats, highless yachts without understanding the people and the, the whole mentality behind it. So hopefully this provided a little bit more insight and uh, uh, preview of, of who the people and who the heritage of the company is. Um, we're glad everybody joined in. If anybody has any questions or would like to get in touch with anybody from the highless team, um, my email address, uh, or the David Walters Yachts email address is sales at davidwaltersyachts.com. And our office line is 954-527-0664. And uh, Kevin, I'm going to bring you up real quick because I want you to uh, make sure I get your contact information in here as well. So would you mind uh, letting folks know how, if they want to get in touch with you, they might be able to do so? Sure. Uh, information. So obviously we've got the website, uh, hylessyachts.com. Uh, to send us an email, it's info at hylessyachts.com. Uh, and to get me directly would be uh, 239-738-8742. Uh, and Peggy, do you know the office number off the top of your head? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> Sorry about that. I never. I never. Sorry. Right. Hey, don't worry. I I'll rescue you here. So Thanks. The, Thanks. The, I I see the uh, the. Cut. 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 Will be five six one, five one five, six zero two seven. That's right. Right. Thank you, Peggy. All right. Thank Thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, we will make sure we have this up on our YouTube channel here for anybody who wants to take a look at it later. Uh, next week, we are going to be hosting a, uh, a, another Hylus webinar dedicated specifically to uh, the new, uh, new models. So we hope you'll tune in, and thanks for joining. Thanks, everyone. Yep, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Josh. Thank thanks, you. everybody.